In this lecture, I'll be discussing the effect of nuclear spin statistics on the rotational Raman spectra. We are seeing this in this series in case of vibrational spectra. Now we'll see for rotational Raman spectra. So the total wave function is a product of the wave functions from the various modes of transition that are possible and whether the rotation is going to be uh, I mean, what nature it is going to have depends on the total product. So let's say, for example, O2, which has a term symbol, I forgot, it's three, I think. So it has a term symbol of uh, molecular term symbol, sigma, three sigma g negative. And if this is negative, that means this is asymmetric. Or let's say the electronic wave function is asymmetric. Vibrational wave function is always symmetric, translation wave function is always symmetric, so you need not worry about that. Now, the uh, nuclear spin is zero and oxygen by default is a boson. So that would mean the psi total has to be symmetric, right? Now I is equals to zero. So what about nuclear spin, a nuclear wave function? So I into 2I plus 1, 2I plus 1 into I plus 1. Which of this is non-zero will define whether the nuclear wave function is symmetric or asymmetric. If this is, z this is zero, in this case, this will be 1 into 1, 1. So if this is non-zero, then it is symmetric. If this is non-zero, this is asymmetric. In our case, it is symmetric. So what am I remaining with here? I have psi total to be symmetric. I have psi electronic, which is asymmetric, multiplied by psi rotation, multiplied by psi. Okay, so vibration and translation are since symmetric, they are not going to make any effect. So that's why what I'm considering is psi uh, nuclear, which turns out to be symmetric. So this also is not going to have any effect. Why I'm saying so? So symmetric into asymmetric is asymmetric. Symmetric into symmetric remains symmetric. And asymmetric multiplied by asymmetric is also symmetric. It's kind of plus into minus, plus into plus, minus into minus. Okay, so if you're using that trend, this is not going to make any effect. All I'm having is this. So for this to be symmetric, this has to be asymmetric. Now, for symmetric, J can take only even values. For asymmetric, J can take only odd values. What do you mean by even and odd values? That the transitions that you are, the speed that you're going to see in the spectrum will correspond to only those transitions which arise from J equal to odd energy levels, like one, three, five, seven. That would mean if you have a spectrum, you're not going to see this peak. Why? This arises from zero to one. And zero is an even number, so that is not allowed. You will see for one, two, two. Uh, let's say I'm seeing for homodiatomic molecules, rotation Raman spectra, so this is going to be zero to two. You will see for one, two, three. You will not see for two to four. You will see for three to five, not for four to six, but you will see for five to seven, not for six to eight. Okay. So, uh, okay. Now let's take another example. Let's say we are taking H2. Now H2 has I equals to half and this is a fermion. So psi total has to be anti-symmetric. Okay. Now this would give you psi n to be I into 2I plus 1, 2I plus 1 into I plus 1. This turns out to be 1. This turns out to be 3. None of them are zero. That, mean, that means both are non-zero. You cannot define whether it is asymmetric or symmetric. It will have both parts. It, it will have contribution from both. So if that is true, uh, 
psi electronic turns out to be symmetric. Uh, psi vibration is already symmetric. Psi translation is already symmetric. So you want the molecule or the total wave function to be asymmetric via psi n and psi r. But you have both here, so that would mean for this to be asymmetric, if this is symmetric, this is asymmetric, if this is asymmetric, this is symmetric. You will have both parts. And how the rotational spectra is going to look because of that? So let's say uh, you have, okay, uh, so you are going to have all of these peaks. Now, it will not be that even uh, peaks arising from even J's are absent. You are going to have all of the peaks. The difference is that the intensity. So the intensity is given by, let's say this is j equals to even, j equals to odd. Now, when will j be even? When will this be symmetric? When psi n is asymmetric. So that would mean i into 2i plus 1. And then will this be odd? When this is asymmetric? When psi n is symmetric. So that means 2i plus 1 i plus 1. This gives you 1 by 3, right? So that would mean the even j, the transitions arising from even j will have intensity 1, while uh, transitions arising from odd j will have 3 times the intensity of even j. So that would mean if I am taking a look at these very peaks, Yeah, fine. 0 to 2, 1 to 3, 2 to 4, 3 to 5. Uh, this will be 4 to 6, 5 to 7, 6 to 8. It's going to look like this. Now let's say instead of H2, I have D2. The difference with D2 is that I'm rubbing this. Okay, so the difference with D2 is that the nuclear spin is now 1, so that would mean this is your 3 and this is your 6. Everything is going to remain the same. The only difference is you will get 3 by 6 here. That would mean this is 1 by 2. Right? So now the peak intensities are going to be 1 is to 2. This was, say, suppose initially. 1 is to 3, this is going to be 1 is to 2 now. Okay, so that's how nuclear spin statistics affect the rotational Raman spectrum, their intensities, and whether some peaks are going to be missing. That will happen when the uh, nucleus quantum number or I uh, nuclear spin is equals to 0 in that only case. Other than that, in all other cases, you're going to have all the lines, the intensity is going to vary. Now we'll take a look at one or two questions that have come previous. The question we have is from GATE 2012. And the question says, a 20491 cm inverse laser line was used to excite oxygen molecules. Okay. Uh, made of oxygen 16 only. That means it is a boson. Psi total has to be symmetric. To obtain the rotational Raman spectrum, the resulting rotational Raman spectrum of oxygen lines has the first Stokes line. So it has the first Stokes line at 20479 centimeter inverse. If you remember, so they have asked you to find the rotational constant. If you remember the spectra, even J were missing. So this was missing. You had this was uh, for 1, 2, 3. And if that is true, delta E is what? B 4J plus 6. 10B for J equals to 1. This is equals to... Okay, so the difference between these is 12 centimeter inverse. And this is equals to 10B. So B equals to 1.2 centimeter inverse. That is your option number A. Another question is that 
the next rotational stokes line is expected at so you know the next line is going to be missing and there is going to be this line for 3 to 5 this was 10 14 18 you can find using this so that means at 18 b you will have a line so let's say this is 18 into 1.2 this will be 21.6 uh yeah this is going to be 21.6 and it will be uh, 20491 minus 21.6 this is going to be somewhere 20469 which is given in option number b so i think there is only one question from this part that's why i decided to make a separate video for this and by this we are actually done with the rotational raman part in the next lecture i'll start or do the discussion of vibration raman spectra and the effect of nuclear spin statistics on the vibrational raman spectra